star date, blah, 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 supplemental. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, guys. Okay, so somebody asked a question here on this video or here. What's it good for, by the way? I thought it was a good question for what, why bother with Raylib if it's not for, you know, any kind of real usage? I mean, and, and it's not my opinion saying that. That's actually um, Ray himself. He is the one who actually presented that idea to me when I asked about it. And he says that Raylib's great for, you know, testing stuff to learning stuff. So I made a video about it for those who, you know, anyhow, somebody asked the question, would it would be cool if or, or it wasn't really a question, it'd be cool if you made the GUI, basically the window code available, the custom window. And I, in this video, I had made a, a custom GUI window. So I finally put it on Codeberg. It's right there. Um, so if you're looking for it, all the code, <clears throat> there it is. There's the custom GUI window. So basically, you're removing the actual Windows window. Like you see, this Firefox has a custom GUI. And you can do that with Windows. Now, Linux and OS X does not have this capability. So you have to use whatever they, you know, that, that comes with the, that op those operating systems. And why do I say this? Well, that's because Raylib does not have the ability of the mouse uh, cursor for global mouse. It has the mouse position within the window itself. So, for example, as I run this, you in Raylib, you get the mouse cursor inside the actual window itself. But in, uh, you know, unfortunately, GLFW does not have the ability to give you the global. Global meaning the whole desktop. And you need that in order to know where to position the window. So, yeah. And by the way, this fully works. So you can resize it. You can maximize it. You can minimize it. Uh, and, of course, shut it down. So it completely works. And the source code, uh, right there. So I've written it down here. Now again, does not work in Linux or OS X, and that's due to uh, Raylib's inability to add the code for this. Um, I guess Ray didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> I'm not real sure. Anyways, this is the source code for Windows that makes it work. Okay, so if you can find a way to change this so that it works in uh, Linux and or uh, OS X, please submit a fix for this on uh, my, or, or yeah, yeah, just submit, uh, submit it here. Do a pull request or, or issue, here's uh, an example, something, anything you can do to help me make this work on Linux would be great. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not really trying to get OS X to work, but uh, if you can, hey, great, submit the code. And I'll see if I can integrate it in, and I'll make another video about it. So right now, as it stands, this only works in Windows. Now, the other thing is I'm using a Windows or a Win32 font, which is Arial, and that is right... Where am I? Uh right there there it is so i'm actually using the built-in Arial windows font now i had consolas i was using that one but unfortunately i kept getting the error from raylib going hey uh it's too big <laughs> so uh, apparently consolas was not made for these larger font sizes which when you go to run this f6 when you go to run this this uh Fonts, this font right here, Arrow, in Consolas, it was a really nice little fancy little GUI demo, which I was showing in my video here. But when I realized, oh crap, there's an error there. Uh, yeah, I just replaced it with Arial and that got rid of the error. So you have to pay attention to the font sizes according to the actual here for Raylib to not complain about it. And I guess that goes for any source code you would use, 
any kind of font for any program you write with, whether you're using Raylib or not. So it's strictly not a Raylib problem, I guess you could say. It's actually a font problem. So if you oversize it too large, the font will not work. And uh, yeah, I've ran into that already. So now the other thing too, and here I will, let's see, how do I want to do this? Um, yeah, we'll just do it this way. Okay. So going here to my task manager and where are you? There you are. Okay, so this may <clears throat> notice it, that its power usage is very low at this time. Anytime you interact with it, though, it raises it slightly, okay, and then it goes right back down. And the reason for this, so for example, right now I'm using 32 mega RAM with it. Of course, if you're going to make the window bigger, it's going to use more RAM. The highest I think I've seen it is, what, uh, 60... 60 meg, I think it was. Yeah, and there are a couple little things I need to add to this GUI. I just haven't done it yet. Things like resizing it from up here or on the side. I haven't done that yet, but everything else is still working. So, yeah, 57.5 meg. Now, if I maximize that, wait for it, and do it like that. Yeah, 57.5. So, basically, it... I have not found any memory leaks. If you find a memory leak, please submit a bug report ASAP. I want to make sure that I get this working correctly. Um, now, again, this right here is the only way I've, I've set it up to resize it. And you could just move it. Uh, eventually, what I'll do is I'll have a double tap. If you double tap in this bar, uh, it'll maximize. But for now, you can maximize using this. But I do want to add a double tap to that. Um, and that should be fairly simple to add. Anyhow, all right, well, um, uh, just wanted to share that this code is out there, and you notice that the console is gone. That is something else I wanted to bring to your attention. And what I mean console is gone is, for example, the actual exe here. Notice there's no console, no console window. And that's due to what I did here. Uh, make file. And I even made a note about it. Uh, where did I put that note? I think it's up here. Yeah, there it is. Made a note about it. So if you want to get rid of the console while you're in Windows, by the way, it only works in Windows. I don't know if it's, this year would work in Linux or, or uh, OS X or not. But in Windows, you can put this in there and it gets rid of the console. As far as the debug, so let's remove one thing at a time. So let's say I get rid of that, right? Uh, can I do this or not? There, let's see if I can get away with that. I don't know if I can. <laughs> F6, yeah, it's gonna error out. I didn't think so, but yeah, I had to try. Okay, so we'll just uh, take that there. And I'm just gonna put it up here so that uh, I don't forget about it there. There. Okay, let's try this again. All right. So the the console output here, um, and so if I run that, we should have a console output there. So now we've got our console output. Now, if we want the actual info from Raylib, take away the no D, uh, uh, that one right there, and I have set that here. All right, so I'm just gonna put that up here. And there it is. Voila. So now if I run this, we get both. We get the information and considered also the console. See, as you can see. Now, it's good to have this when you're working with Raylib because this gives you information that you actually will need. And it'll also tell you of any warnings or errors all right here. But when you're ready for final release, make sure to put... Uh, these in their respective locations. You put this at the end here, and you put this at the end here. It has to be in that order, um, because apparently make make itself, I guess. Um, I, when I tried it the other way, by putting it here at the end of here, it wouldn't work. So, yeah. 
it is what it is. And the only reason this is doing this is because of this hash sign, so that I can uh, remember to add those there where I need to add them later. All right. Well, I hope this. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was something else. Uh, now, in case you needed to know, this is based off of a state system that I've set up so we can maximize exit, resize, move, all that stuff. That's for the GUI itself. This obviously is for global mouse. That's like this whole thing, okay? And uh, again, Rayleigh does not have that ability. Um, I added a couple of the structs in order to manipulate information easier. Um, normally, you don't want to have uh, four, or I'm, I'm sorry, you don't want to have five or, or more than four inputs on a function because you start um, banging into the stack, so to speak. So, but in this case, I just went ahead and left it like this. And uh, I set this up as a pointer so that way it wouldn't thrash the stack so badly. And uh, yeah, it seems to be working out. This creates the minimize icon. So let me move this over to the side here. All right, so we got that. All right. So the minimized icon, right now the minimized icon is what you're looking at right here, okay? And it's the red, okay? Notice the red, that's the hover. That's a, Those are actual separate icons. So what I've done is I've set up a minimize icon here, a max maximized icon here or a max icon. So this, you as you see, is the max. When you click it, notice you have a white. See, when you hover over it, it's using the maxed, but leaving it like the white there, that's maximized. So those are the, uh, the max and the maximize. Those are the two different icons I'm using for that. And then of course you have the create exit icon, which is the red and white right there. Now, what you see normally here with the orange is already pre-drawn into the texture, the main texture itself. That's where all this is coming in um, right here. So the even the, the text here is pre-drawn onto this main texture. And that's using this right here. And speaking of that, I need to raise this, I'm going to say uh, 8, and I'm going to say 11. There. And I probably should fix that there too, but yeah. All right, F6, let's see if that fixes that. Yeah, so now it's not so, not so low down. I need to update that on the uh, Codeberg as well. Uh, but yeah, you can play with that and uh, experiment and see what works for you. So, for example, you may not like the shadows uh, as extended as it was. Yeah, see, that's, that's a little tighter. That looks cleaner, actually. So, yeah, there's that. And also, too, uh, you have these right here that you can adjust. So those are the two different positions of text. And that's how you get that overlay. And, of course, I'm using the same font size. Now, the spacing here can be also changed. Um, so, for example, I could set it up like this. Hit F6. And it spreads it out a little further. So, yeah. You have different choices here. You can go back to uh, 1. If you so choose. F6. Uh, yeah, and it... It brings them closer together, the text does. So I usually leave it at two. Uh, I prefer to, that kind of spacing, but that's really your choice. Now, I can preset these up as defines, and it would make it a lot easier. Uh, but, you know, I was trying to remove any and all globals, uh, although defines are not really considered a global because that is a... Uh, preprocessor basically the processor itself deals with that so it's not really a global I put all of anything that looked like I could have used as a global anyway they're inside the main file so there's no globals in this to actually worry about 
Now you have the do while loop right here. And this do while loop is pretty long. Um, it's checking the mouse, checking the mouse state. And then once it gets through there, okay, then you have the drawing right here and the beginning and end right there. So anything you would want inside this, anything you would want inside this window here or any info at the bottom that you would want here, that's where you would add it all right here. That's why I left this note. And then of course, when the program closes, it unloads everything. And of course, of course, also, when you click the exit button, it does the same thing here and returns. So keep that in mind as well. Um, getting the mouse position, its mouse buttons, and, and what I'm doing is I'm saving these inside of a struct. So that's what's going on there. You got your resize, the movement, everything's here. Um, also, too, uh, where are you? I know you're here. Do, 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 do. Yes, minimize. It must be down here. Yep, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> so what happens is I have this set up to sync with your, uh, what's the word, uh, with, with your screen res, uh, frames per second. So right now, my Windows is set up as 60 frames. I can actually do, I believe, 144, but I keep the lower frames so that way I don't uh, use so much of the resources of my laptop. So I am using this here. Now, you could completely remove this, but remember, your CPU usage will go pretty much to 100%. So keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, so I have this set to... When you press the mouse button down, it removes the V-Sync and it'll max out. But when you go to release, so what'll happen is we're setting the state when we release the button. And that will bring it back to, in my case, 60 frames per second. Some people may have only 30 frames per second or, or you know, Maybe you're running on a really slow laptop and it's uh, 20 frames per second. I mean, you just never know. This is why I don't use the set FPS function that comes with the Raylib. Um, is right there. Anyways, it's in here, set, uh, set FPS. It's in there somewhere. Ah, there it is. I don't use this function because there's no way to disable it. And the thing is, is even though you're setting a target FPS, the problem with it is, A, I can't figure out how to disable it because I've set it back to zero and it just doesn't work. Um, and there, and I, there's no disabling function for that. So. so basically what it is, is you're saying, okay, set FPS. Let's say you say it, set it to 60 or you set it to 30. Well, you're setting it that way for all computers and what if you get one that doesn't work that many frames per second so this is why this is a bad idea and by the way i need to uh, zoom in on that set target fps it's a bad idea to use that function so this is why i am using the uh the feature here of where did i <laughs> did i lose it already here it is the clear state or the set state okay, for the VSync itself. And when you do it this way, it becomes a much smoother transition and it'll work with your screen instead of against it. And you don't get any tears. So it moves pretty quickly like that. Um, every once in a while, it might lose your mouse, but yeah, for the most part, it stays put. And you can resize and it, you know, it really, like you can hear my fans taking off all of a sudden. And that's because, again, when you're clicking, now, if you're clicking on something else, notice it shouldn't do anything. Uh, if you move the mouse, it'll do something. But clicking on it, look, I've got my button down and nothing's happening. Moving the mouse, eh, doesn't seem to do anything. Moving my mouse, doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, but the moment you try to actually do something that way, or you interact with one of the buttons, as far as maximizing or minimizing or restretching, that's when it'll start to affect it. Although I think I have it set to where it, it still won't uh, do any 
um, you know, change in the state. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Doesn't do it when you do this because it's only a simple hover or a highlight and all you're doing is drawing a texture, so it's not a big deal. Anyhow, um, yeah, I hope this solves some uh, issues. Um, yeah, that's not gonna work. It's this one. There it is. Some di some of the different functions I've got in there. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, sorry for the long video, but just wanted to give you some insights on how this GUI thing works. And I try to keep it as simplistic as I could. I'll catch you later. Have a good day.